Amen, amen. It's the God in me. God is good. Hallelujah. Good morning, good afternoon, and or, or good evening, wherever you are. This is Reverend Nessie of New Birth Ministries, and I'm glad that you're listening today. I pray that your day is blessed, and if it doesn't seem to be going that way, bless it yourself. Amen. God lives in you. It's the God in you. Amen. Amen. It's the God in you. He gave you his power, so use it. Amen. I'm glad to see you all on this morning. I pray that your household, everything is going good in your life because God intends for it to go good. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I was blessed Friday. I was so blessed the 18th um, this past Friday to be a part of the Rosh Hashanah celebration by Washington, uh, Pennsylvania's local ministers. I was so honored to stand upon the stairs of the Washington County Courthouse and declare the word of the Lord to the county and tell the people to repent and come to Jesus. Amen. It's what I do. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'd like to thank Reverend Kim Asbury for inviting me and Elder Rita Coleman for the transportation and enjoyable talk up and back. We had a good time, and they are truly earthly angels of God. Hallelujah, and I thank God for them. Today the topic is, there is sin in the camp. There is sin in the camp. Get your swords and a drink and a snack, whatever, and maybe a tablet or a pen, and sit back, and we'll delve into this subject right after I invite the Holy Spirit, because he is what we need today. He is our teacher, amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you for today. I bless each and every person that's on here today. We bless you, Baruch Hashem. We bless you for blessing us. We bless you for being our God. We bless you for taking care of us and showing us the way and saving us from sin, hell, and death. Thank you for sending Jesus down to save us, to be our Savior, to be our Lord. We confess you, Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, as our Savior and our Lord. Bless this session today, and Holy Spirit, use me to teach. That's what you do, and we thank you for it. Use me to teach those who listen to this either now, live, or later. And I thank you for the opportunity to be able to do so. I lift up all the prayer requests that we receive, um, spoken or unspoken. We give all of those prayer requests to you. You know what people need. You know what people have been asking for. So we give them to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We just thank you for this day. We thank you for our health. By your stripes, Jesus, we are healed. No matter what the enemy tries to put in our minds, we decree and declare that we are healed. We've been healed over 3,000 years ago. Hallelujah. 2,000 years ago. Thank you, Lord. 2,000 years ago. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it. Hallelujah. So, Holy Spirit, use me, use me, and I thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I've taken it back another thousand. Hey, you know, God had a plan. Amen. God is good. He takes care of us. Yes, he does. Um, Turn turn your sword. I'll be reading out of Joshua chapter 7. Amen. Joshua chapter 7. Hallelujah. And it reads, it's kind of long. I'll try to read it as quick as I can. I don't want to keep anybody on too long. Amen. People's um, thought processes are are a little shorter nowadays. Amen. Hallelujah. They want to hear the word, get the the spirit. Amen. Get the message from the spirit and call it a day. Live on that. Amen. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing for Achan the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, and the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethaven, and on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, 
and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote them, about thirty and six men. For they chased them down before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes, and he fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord of the, uh, until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? But to God we have been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall envire around us and cut off your name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And then Joshua 7.10 says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore lies thou uh, thus upon thy face. Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken of a curse of thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel cannot stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were a curse. Neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy and be a cursed thing from among you. Up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel, thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by household, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come by man, shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he has, because he transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he was brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zerites, and he brought the family of the Zerites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zer, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them. And I took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent, and behold, it was hid in the tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel, laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and the oxen, asses and the sheep and his tent and all that he had, and they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. Amen. The Valley of Achor <clears throat> unto this day. Amen. In the previous chapter of Joshua, chapter 6, we see that Joshua was doing so well for the Lord. Um, 
that he was doing so good for the Lord that they noised abroad. If you remember, we talked about that last Sunday about noising, noise abroad. And, and everybody cherished him. Everybody heard about Joshua. Amen. The greatness that he's done, the anointing that he had on him. He became famous. But there's always that one or those few people who do what is antichrist in the camp, who ruin it for you, especially if the anointing is not on them. Amen. Or they're too weak to carry it through. You have those who are obedient and serve with you. And you have those who are disobedient and mess up the whole project being selfish or self-righteous. Do you know people who are going to um, worship God in their own way or do things that they feel is needed in their lives, whether God likes it or not? We're just going to do what we want to do. It works for us, right? (laughs) Amen? There is one lifestyle that is never going to be a good or taken seriously lifestyle, and that is God and sin. You cannot do both. You have to pick a side. We will never win and will always be depressed, lacking in victories. With sin dwelling in a camp, we will always be defeated. No matter how we try to play it off, no matter how you try to smile and be fake or phony, you will always lose. God sees our heart. See, man might not be able to see what is living inside you. Man might not, your friends or your pastor or your your neighborhood might not be able to see what's in you, but God knows your heart. He sees it. This is one of the main problems that we're having today. Nobody wants to repent. You may have heard preachers saying it on on YouTube, on TV, on the Christian stations. Nobody wants to repent anymore. And it's getting worse. Everybody wants to do their own thing and have become so hard-hearted that they don't see anything wrong in their actions. Do you know anybody like that? They don't see anything wrong in their own actions. But they can see what you do wrong and will call you out on it as well. Amen? The Word said that in the end time, people will call wrong right and right wrong. And it is happening today. Amen. During this weekend, we celebrated Rosh Hashanah 4781, which is the new year on the Jewish calendar. This is a celebrated time of apples, honey, and a beautiful bread called chala. It's pronounced hala with the ha throat sound at the beginning. This is a major time of the year to repent. See, people celebrate. They eat. They drink. But we have to bring in that word, repent. This is the major time of the year to repent of all your sins. Luke 15 says, Luke 15, 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. Amen? The angels repent. The, the angels joy. They're happy. Hallelujah. They have a party in heaven over one person that repents. There's joy. Hallelujah. There is a blessing in repenting. There are certain times of the year where you can receive double portion blessings for adhering to God's commands and laws, and especially in the giving portion. Amen. What you give will come back to you. And I like to say God will give you double for your trouble because he is a God of enough. Amen. And it's in Luke 6.38 as well. It says, give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You take flour, you put it in a cup, okay? Like a a two-cup measuring cup, whatever you have. You put the flour in, okay? And you think you have two cups of flour, right? It's up to the, 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 the red line two cups, but it's not two cups of flour. This is how God does it. God does. God gets deep. He doesn't just go do it on the outside. He gets deep down in. He shakes it. You shake that cup a little bit, tap on the bottom of it, tap on the side, and then press it down with your hand, and then you find out you have one and three-fourths cups. So, so you could actually add more flour in it, right? You could actually add more flour in it to make two cups. Hallelujah. And that's what God 
always gives us more. Hallelujah. Now let's take a look at uh, what Rosh Hashanah is. The words actually mean head of the year and are used to mark the beginning of the Jewish New Year. After all, Jesus was Jewish and believers are grafted in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Rosh Hashanah is a two-day period that culminates with Yom Kippur, which is uh, on the 28th, 9-28th, the Day of Atonement, the at one month Atonement, and the holiest day on the Jewish calendar. The two-day period is also referred to as the Days of Awe and focuses on repentance and atonement. Amen. The first defeat and its cause with Israel in this story, Israel was taught that victory is possible only where there are exact obedience and sincere consecration. We cannot cope with our foes unless we live in unclouded fellowship with God. You simply are not going to win. If you don't do that, you're, you're never, you will never win. Amen. Second Chronicles 15.2 says, And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Amen. If you want God, God wants you. If you invite him in, he'll be glad to come in, help you with all of your troubles. Amen. But if you don't want to be bothered with him, if you want to be bothered with him, he won't want to be bothered with you. God is a gentleman. He doesn't force himself on anybody. Amen. So if you run into somebody that really acts like they don't want to be bothered with God, oh, I'm not into that right now. I just don't believe in that stuff. Just keep them in prayer. Amen. We can't force anybody. We can't be saved for anybody. Amen. Our spiritual allies in the heavenly places cannot cooperate while evil is... Ho- I will read that again. Our spiritual allies in the heavenly places cannot cooperate while evil is harbored. If you're harboring evil, you will always lose because the angels, they're not going to help you. Amen. Canaan was a gift to faith and a strong spiritual life was preemptory. The gold and the silver of Jericho were consecrated to God, see, so that Achan committed sacrilege as well as theft. He was stealing from God. Ai, okay, if you want to write down Genesis twelve eight and Genesis thirteen three, you can study it later. Ai lay two miles north of Jericho and was a comparatively small place, but without God, the smallest opposition is too great for us. Joshua seemed more concerned for the disgrace brought on a divine name than for the disaster to his men. Let us always look to our failures, look at our failures from God's side. We must not lie too long in the dust of despair. Okay, don't mourn too long. You always hear me say that. But arise to detect and put away the hidden cause of our defeat. And if you want to write down Hosea 5.15... And read it later in Hosea 6, 1 to 2. Amen. Israel ended up getting beaten in battle by AI. Now, the name AI itself is strange to me. Okay? It's strange because the word today is used to describe what we call artificial intelligence. And we all know what that means. Artificial is something that's not real. It's a remake, a version of, a shadow of something real. Types and shadows like us. Okay, we are just types and shadows of whatever is really in heaven. Amen? Amen. The greens down here and the reds down here can't compare to the greens and the reds and the blues in heaven. Amen? Hallelujah. Therefore, I get the thought that artificial intelligence is a remake, a version, or a shadow of God's original plan. Think about this city, AI. An evil twin, so to speak. The people of AI were not very nice, and and they weren't very nice and respectful people. Therefore, uh, it sealed my thoughts of that name. 
And just like the speck of evil that was found on Lucifer's heart, the enemies of God are only a spot on the earth that do not deserve to breathe God's good air. And if you notice, they stoned Achan for his sin. No more. He existed no more. And his stuff with him. Amen. And they burned when they were done. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, the warrior's coming out of me. Okay. I'm acting like our forefather, King David. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I digress. Amen. After all of the pomp and circumstance of celebrating such a wonderful leader as Joshua, they still lost the battle. Okay, Joshua's famous, his name's getting out there, everybody knows he's a man of God, everybody's happy because they have this man of God with him, he's a wonderful warrior, but what happened? I'll tell you what happened, it's simple. Somebody got greedy and took the things that God warned them not to take. They smuggled. Amen? They smuggled within their own belongings the silver and gold that was to be dedicated to the Lord's treasury. They took something that was supposed to belong to the Lord and called it their own. They stole from the Lord. This means that they were actually stealing from God. What do we steal today? His tithe? Are you stealing his tithe? Are you stealing his time? Does man attempt to duplicate life, medicine, Joy, food, and sometimes even anointing. Alcohol and drugs poorly duplicate God's joy. It's not the same as Holy Ghost joy. Medicines poorly duplicate natural remedies that God has given to man. Amen? Look, they didn't try to give Jesus an opiate when he was on a cross. (laughs) All right? They gave him sour vinegar that was made to heal or relieve pain. Amen. The man that wanted to give him that wanted to help him to relieve his pain. What we need today is obedience. God honors obedience. Greed and selfishness are two major forms of disobedience and will ruin a nation, city, or a household in a heartbeat. Joshua 7, 3. He said 3,000 men and 36 Approximately 1% got killed unexpectedly, and AI chased Israel. It says Israel chasing AI, AI chase, the, the fake, phony thing chased Israel. See, you, the, look, the devils are supposed to run from you. You are not supposed to run from them, point blank, period. You have God living in you, why are you running from devils? You have God living in you, why are you so concerned about the evil that's going on around you? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. AI's defeat was vital to the conquest of the entire land. Israel had to get them. Israel had to win over them. It was small but essential. It would give Israel control of the main route that ran along from north to south in the central portion of the land. Canaanites were known to be very belligerent and vowed people who practiced immorality, including child sacrifice, which we are still doing today. They had 400 years to repent. That's a long time, folks. They have 400 years to repent. And now their iniquity had become full. Once that happens, God puts out a command that the actors must be eliminated from the earth as not to pollute the remnant. It was Israel's order to get rid of them, just as it was when Samuel commanded King Saul to get rid of the enemy. But he kept the king back and their animals and defied the command of God's prophet. We must listen to what God's prophets are saying today. Take out time of your day. Follow them online. Listen to what they have to say. Get the word, get the word, get the word. And make sure you check in your spirit whether or not they truly are prophet of the Most High God, or if they're just for show. Amen. If they're just entertainers. <laughs> There's always someone or something that will attempt to make the man or woman abort their calling and even attempt to foul their right. They, evil will attempt to foul your righteousness if you allow it to. 
I heard somebody say recently, uh, the Jezebel spirit. And sometimes you can entertain a Jezebel spirit and not even know it, and it will begin to take over you and tell you what to say and tell you what to do. The devil stays busy. Everyone who says that they are a part of Israel, the church, is not always what they claim to be. God says that we serve him with our mouths but not our heart. How many times has that happened? Which one are you? Are you serving God with your mouth or are you serving God with your heart? We, we saw this in Sodom and Gomorrah with Brother Lot and Nineveh, Brother Jonah, where the people were absolutely so perverted who needed someone to come to them and preach the word to get them saved. God always gives us a chance. Take it or leave it. Achan took some of the things that were banned to take, and he hid them in his own belongings as not to be revealed. In other words, he premeditated sin, and he didn't really want anybody to find out. There are always those who think that what they're doing is in secret and nobody will know. Amen? (laughs) The devil has them totally blind, and they're being deceived, thinking that they are actually being slick, slicksters, deceivers. Jesus said in John 8, 44, he told him, you're of your father the devil, and the lust of your father will you do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The devil is a liar. Amen. You know what I was speaking at the courthouse the other day, me, uh, Friday, it was Friday, me and um, Apostle Burgess, the microphone went out on both of us. <laughs> something happened, and you want to know something? We just kept speaking, speaking the word of God, speak the word of God, and we found out things. the devil is a liar. We kept talking anyway, whether it was going to work or whether it wasn't going to work, we were. Amen. We're going to get the word out. Amen. Speak the word in season and out of season. Just speak the word because the devil's a liar. He's going to do everything he can to stop you from doing so. Joshua knew that something had happened for them to have lost the war. That war should have been so easy for them to win. He fell on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening, and he and the elders put dust on their faces in sorrow. He talked to the Lord and asked what he should do before the Canaanites slandered Israel's name. God asks him why he was on his face, although we know that God is omniscient and he knows everything, right? He just wants to hear it from you. He just wanted to hear it from him. Amen? Just as he did with Adam and Eve when they plundered and blundered and fouled up their blessings. In turn, God told Joshua what happened and revealed that they had taken the curse of things. Disassembled them as not to be found and placed them among their own stuff. Joshua 7.12 shows us that when you take something that's cursed, you become cursed along with it. I re- I'll repeat that. When you take something that is cursed, you become cursed with it. God then goes on to tell the leader that he will no longer be with them until they destroy the accursed thing. See, God said, I, I, I'm a good ghost. <laughs> Pardon my pun. <laughs> God said, I can't stay. You get rid of that, I'll come back. And you know, they have a term for that, Ichabod, okay? And no, not Ichabod Crane, as in the well-known Halloween fable, although that might be why the writer chose that name for his character. Amen? God said he will leave. In verse 13, God tells Joshua to sanctify himself and tell the people that he knows that there's an accursed thing in the camp and they will never be able to conquer their enemies until they get rid of it. This is what happens in our lives as well. Some of us have a cursed thing in our midst and are wondering why it seems that we cannot win the struggles in our lives. It's because folks really think that their sneakiness and cunning will go undetected and God will still bless their house, their city, their nation, their jobs, finances, romantic lives, relationships, family, and so forth. Newsflash, God will not bless your mess. God will not, he's not going to bless your mess. What's the, hey, what's the, difference, the definition of an insanity? I'm sure all of you have heard it. What's the definition of insanity? 
repeated actions that do not work. Amen? Check your house. This is a word to everybody listening. Check your house. See if there's anything in your house or your life that should not be there. Have you stolen anything from the vile and inconsiderate that God is about ready to punish? Thinking that you would prosper with it? Verse 15 is the kicker. God burns the trans. Did you hear that when I was reading it? God burns the transgressor along with the fire that has been prepared to burn the thing that caused the transgression. He says that the person has brought folly in Israel. You look up the word folly and it says a lack of good sense, foolishness, a foolish act, idea, or practice. Okay, to practice something is continuing. Are you living a foolish life? I pray to God that none of you are, none of us. But let's pray for the ones that we know are. Amen. Amen. That sometimes the devil has them so blind they don't even realize that they're foolish. A lack of good sense. How many of us have brought folly into our lives by greed and disobedience? People don't take them seriously because they're a fool. Disobedience is Satan's middle name. He wanted to be a part of the Godhead so bad that he began to do his own thing and could care less about God's covenant. He broke covenant with God. We have to make sure that in days and times like these where everything is me, 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 everything is mine, 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 that we don't break the covenant with God just to get what we want. Amen? Samuel L. Jackson says in the commercial, what's in your wallet? I say, (laughs) what's in your house? What do you have in your house that's causing God Ichabod? What is is in your house that is causing an Ichabod situation in your life where you cannot hear God, you cannot feel God, and you feel abandoned? I know he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but he also wants a relationship with you. He's not going to dwell where evil dwells. He's not going to do it. Either you live a righteous life, you know, what's in your house? Why do you keep losing wars? Israel lost the war and lost their favor due to sin being up in the camp. Sin was in the camp, y'all. Are you losing because there's sin somewhere? They, what they say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Righteousness and sin cannot dwell in the same place. You could say, oh, my God, all you want to. You could say, I love God or, yes, I'm a Christian. If you are, if you have sin up in your house, you got the devil in you. Look. You got the devil all up in your crib, and you want somebody to believe you're a Christian. Psych. No. It don't work like that. Amen? Amen. Righteousness and sin cannot dwell in the same place. That's an oxymoron. Water and oil do not mix. God and the devil do not share the same apartment, and no, it's not a duplex. Amen? (laughs) This is why God says that we cannot be lukewarm. He does not share with unbelievers. Look at Hebrews 11.1. 1, amen. And then even Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you're diligently seeking God and you don't expect to be rewarded for it, that's not good either. Expect your rewards. God wants you to. Amen. Are you saved? Are you saved? Now is the time to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now, accept him. Put everything aside and just repent. What was we talking about earlier? Repenting, apologizing for your sins, for all of your wrongdoing. With all that's going on around the world, you need a friend. And Jesus can be that special friend if you allow him in your life. He's your helper, your teacher, your guide, and his Holy Spirit is your comforter. If you're not saved, just repeat after me and say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. I'm so sorry, Lord. I believe that you died on the cross 
and rose three days later from the dead just for me. And I accept what you've done. I accept you as my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And be the first and the second because the angels got you. The angels got you back, right? They are, and they have joy right now in heaven because you accepted the Lord and Jesus as your Savior. And the Bible says he throws your problems, your sins and everything as far as the east is from the west. They, you have, they are there no more. And whatever you have, whatever you have done up to this point is gone. Start all over. Wipe the slate clean. Amen. Now go find a Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled church and learn of him. It's never too late to learn of him. Your life, your new life, it starts now. Hallelujah. Now I like to tell people, go live, go laugh, and go love. Amen. Let me bless you before we leave. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Hallelujah. Peace. Shalom. Thank you for coming on today. And I pray that your week goes by victoriously. God bless you. And amen.